Today, I will talk a little bit about the history of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. As you might have believed, but it's wrong, cryptocurrency was not created with Bitcoin. It has a much longer history, starting all back in the 1980s or even 70s, if you calculate it that way, with an American computer scientist and cryptographer called David Shum. In 1982, with his dissertation, Computer System Established, Maintained and Trusted by Mutually Suspicious Groups, is the first known protocol for a blockchain protocol complete with the code to implement the protocol. Shum's dissertation proposed all but one element of the blockchain later detailed in the Bitcoin white paper, as we will talk about later. Shum has been called the father of online anonymity and the godfather of cryptocurrency. So what are blockchains, you might ask? Well, blockchains simply provide a mechanism through which mutually distrustful remote parties or nodes can reach consensus on the state of a ledger or of information. To trace the origins of these technologies, we start by identifying their essential elements informally. A blockchain is a distributed ledger comprising blocks or records of information, including information about transactions between two or more parties. The blocks are cryptographically linked to create an immutable ledger. Notes may append information to the ledger through invoking transactions. So Bitcoin was created by someone or a group called that call themselves Satoshi Nakamoto. However, Satoshi wasn't the inventor of the underlying technological ideas. Those were created many years earlier. Even the idea of immutably chaining blocks of information with cryptographic has functioned appears as early as in a 1979 dissertation by Ralph Merkel uh, at Stanford University, where he explains how information can be linked in a tree structure known as Merkel hash tree. Now, what is the Merkel hash tree, you're asking yourself? Well, in cryptography and computer science, a hash tree or Merkle hash tree is a tree in which every leaf is a node and is labeled with the cryptographic hash of a data block. And every node that is not a leaf is labeled with the cryptographic hash or the labels of its, its child nodes. A hash tree simply allows efficient and secure verification of the contents of a large data structure. A hash tree is a generalization of a hash list and hash chain. And then you of course have to ask, what is a hash list and hash chain? Well, a hash list is a list of hashes of the data blocks in a file or set of files. And a hash chain is the successive application of a cryptographic hash function to a piece of data to put it as simple as I can explain. So next up history of Bitcoin. So as I said earlier, Satoshi Nakamoto, either a person or a group, created the Bitcoin protocol back in 2008. On August 18, 2008, the domain name bitcoin.org was created or bought. And no, it is not the same owners today as it was back then. Later on October 31st, 2008, the famous Bitcoin white paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, was released 
at only eight pages. The following year, in January 2009, Bitcoin was launched as an open source software. And the price for one Bitcoin was zero, actually zero. And in November last year, 2021, it was actually higher than 69,000 US dollars for one Bitcoin. And my guess is like within two years, it will be even higher than that. So today, everyone has at least heard of Bitcoin. Even my mother-in-law, who does doesn't know anything about cryptocurrency. She doesn't need, she haven't even heard the word cryptocurrency, but she has heard of Bitcoin. However, it wasn't until July 2010 that Bitcoin became available for public purchase at a price of 0 0.0008 US dollars, a fraction of a cent. So if you would have bought bitcoins for ten, Bitcoin for $10, you would have gotten 12,500 Bitcoins. And if you had sold it all, when the top was, let's say, $69,000, you would have gotten at least 862,500,000 US dollars. And that's not bad. And if you had waited until Bitcoin price was around 20,000, as it is around this time, the summer of 2022, well, you were only gotten a lousy $250 million. That's not a lousy $250 million. Yeah. But it's not bad for a $10 investment, right? That only happened 12 years ago. So you and so don't forget that a lousy $10 can go a long way. In 2010, the price of one Bitcoin was as high as 40 cents. We all wish we invested back then, right? Yeah, I do. But I started mining a little bit back then. And the date, May 22nd, 2010, will always be known as Bitcoin Pizza Day, after a guy called Jeremy Sturdivant bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. Think about it. Yeah, that was the world's most expensive pizza, if you go with the price today. It was a lot cheaper back then, of course. For many years, Bitcoin had a bad reputation, with everything from tourist financing, money laundering, buying and selling drugs and other illegal services, ransomware, extortion, Ponzi schemes and more. That, that is even today, happen. it happens even today, you know. But the truth is, all of this is true, as I can say, just as true as people also use the US dollars, the European Union's Euro and many other fiat currencies as well for the exact same, but even more. So Bitcoin is like a frac fraction or like really low percentage. Should we ban dollars and euro as well may then maybe, as some people want? Well, that I'll leave up to you. The truth is actually that the parts that Bitcoin is used for illegal activities are so small, we really can't think about that and judge Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency only for that. We have to look more at Bitcoin as an opportunity and not as a threat. You know, Bitcoin is here to stay. Bitcoin is here to benefit society. It is a new financial paradigm that makes it easier, cheaper, and safer for people and institutions to transmit and store value. Like with the internet, it doesn't dis discriminate based on who you are or where you're from, allowing for equal and universal financial access. And today we're even seeing countries using Bitcoin as a legal tender to buy things in the country that their governments have made legal and many other more simply 
countries have legalized Bitcoin as either a security or simply as an investment like stocks and bonds. So Bitcoin is not going anyway. So we all just have to start dealing with it. So I also want to say like here in Sweden, we can deduct when we buy cryptocurrency, we can deduct actually the winnings and the if we have losses. So let's say we just after we exchange it for fiat currency and transfer it to our bank account. Let's say we have $1,000, but we only invested $100. So then we have $900 in profit. In Sweden, we then on those $900 in profit, we have to pay 30% tax. I know it sounds a lot for some countries. However, here in Sweden, like, I lived overseas a bit, but I'm getting more and more used to it now. So I'm, I'm actually not complaining, but uh, maybe some other people complain. Maybe US citizens will complain because they really have low, low, low taxes there, but they also have to pay for everything. Well, this is not a political video. I just want to talk about cryptocurrency and uh, Bitcoin, the history, a little bit to make a video. Well, until my next video. So yes, guys, I know that video was a bit boring. I was just talking after my script. I almost fell asleep myself doing that one. So yeah, but I just wanted to tell everybody that next time at 5,000 subscribers, I'm giving away one whole BNB. All you have to do is subscribe, watch, or view and comment if you don't comment on the video where I get my 5,000 subscriber you're not getting the BNB it's so simple right and then when when I get 10,000 um, the same thing goes for that but then I'm giving away one plane ticket to Thailand so I really hope we can go there or I'm gonna go there this winter but if you want to go there during the winter that's up to you but until then, now I'm going to bed. So take care, everybody.